What's what's up with it? You already know what it is. It's your boy Rocket, Mr. Rocket, Manager Rocket. Uh, I'm on all hip hop. It's my home. Happy to be here. All hip hop, baby. Appreciate y'all. Word up. What's going on, y'all? It's your man Chuck Creekmer, aka Jigsaw, here with DJ Thorough yes, at One World yes, Studios. Yes, yes. And we are here with none other than I'm putting Mister in front of it. <laughs> Mister Rocket, Rock, that's what's up. rapper turned manager, man. CEO, yeah, I mean yeah. everything, businessman, everything yeah. you want to be in this business right now. We've been chopping it up for a few minutes, bro, and uh, you got a lot of insight, man. You dropping parables here in the studio, <laughs> bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so first things first, man. Give people just a quick overview of who you are. Like, obviously, we've known you for a long time. You've done several interviews as an artist Facts. on all hip hop, Facts. but you've evolved a lot over the last. Years, let's yeah. just say years. Yeah, yeah. last years. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I'm a now I'm a manager. Yeah, which is uh, which is uh, been my you know profession for the past you know five to six years. I I got that job from Fifty, and we'll touch on that you know later mm -hmm. on in the interview. But I started off in the music industry. I was signed to Young Jeezy. Um, I've worked with you know so many big artists that you mm -hmm. that you guys probably already know, and that's that's what gave me my kind of a groundwork and to be able to do management and entertainment and acting mm -hmm. and athletes because I, I did have the footwork. Right. Um, uh, and, and you know, now, now I'm strictly, uh, I'm strictly business, man. They say uh, I'm a square bear from Delaware. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, you know. I'm originally from Delaware. That's the Delaware funny thing. <laughs> it is. It is. The hey, it's all good. Yeah. No, that's what's up. That's crazy. What led you to, was that always your plan to do music, to start management? Or was there something that led to you, I'm not doing music, I'm going to manage? What, what happened? So uh, I was doing music, um, you know, for, I was doing music for a long time. Okay. Music just say didn't work out. It didn't we'll work just put out. it That's like that. Say, you know, okay. it didn't work out. Okay. And um I was just doing other things. I had, you know, been outside a little bit. I've worked different places. I've right. tried different things. And, and um I, you know, I was just doing me. I've always been in touch with, you know, the industry, the entertainers, the right. athletes. That's always been a part of my life. Right. And then uh, one day, uh, me and Lil Meech are uh, in Vegas, and he's on a rooftop. And uh, we're sitting there, and I ask him, I say, uh, if acting ever were to come your way, you know, would you do it? Right. And this is prior to 50's plan. 50 had this mastermind right. plan, right? So um, he says yes. And then, you know, to make a short story shorter, uh, he gets a call from 50. We fly right. to Atlanta, right, to do this BMF casting. Right. So we get to uh, to Atlanta to do this BMF casting. You know, Fifth's there. The, uh, uh, you know, his coworkers are there. And at this time, we have no idea that, that, Fifth's game plan was for Little Meats to be the star of the show, right? right? We didn't know that. Uh, we get there. We have a few short conversations. Um, you know, we all talk for a second. Fifth's like, hey, I'm going to call y'all. We'll leave it at that. Uh, he calls two days later. He says, you know, hey, you know, Little Meats called Rocket. Calls me on three-way. Mm. Uh, you know, Fifth's like, yeah, you're his manager. We need you to, you know, right. make sure he gets to... You know, the acting class is on time, make sure he, you know, basically just does what he needs to do to become this superstar that Fifth had already knew he was. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and, and what I didn't know was Fifth was also grooming me at the time, right? Uh -huh. Because for him to even put me in that position, he had to see something in me right, right. from the time that we met. Yeah. So that, you know, that turned into going with him to, to, uh, you know, to acting classes, to, you know, meetings, you know, with, with, with our guy, Baby J. We used to, you know, sit there at, uh, meetings two times, uh, two times a week, sometimes, sometimes more, um, of watching him grow from, you know, an awesome young man into right. a mega star yeah. to, you know, to seeing the changes to the conversation. So those two years of going back and forth, two stars to, you know, making sure he did what he was supposed to do to become the superstar, you know, kind of gained trust through, with fifth for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, after that, Fifth just put me in place, bro. It was out of, mm. I'm out of here after that. I'm I'm on set. He's giving me a consultant job. Right. You know, he's letting me be an associate producer on the BMF documentary. Like, this yeah. man is just opened the floodgates for me to play ball. So, right, right. you know, me, I, I, I get an opportunity. I'm going to go for it. Right. Now, um, people don't just pop up yeah. next to Lil Meech. Right, yeah. There's a backstory to that. How did How did that come about? Um, when I was rapping in LA, 
uh, there was a guy who who took me to this house in the valley. At, at this time, I didn't know where I was going, right? Mm -hmm. I'm probably 19 years old. He's telling me that these guys got money and they got a record label mm -hmm. and they want to, you know, they're looking for rappers. So we uh, we go to the valley. We go to this house. This, when I tell you this house was out of this world, mansion in the valley, uh, OG by the name of Pops. You guys probably seen him on the documentary, Wayne mm -hmm. Wayne. This was his house at the time, or one of his houses. Um, and I went there and I, I, I rapped for him. And at this time, I still didn't know you know, where I was going or who I was talking to at the time. Mm -hmm. But it didn't take me long to figure out, you know, this was this was some big dog shit. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I get there. I do some rapping. Um, you know, we chop it up. And then that turned from, you know, work, you know, being there with Pops to Big Meech coming over one day. And then, you know, meeting Big Meech. I'm still 19, 20 at the time. Then Jeezy's coming over. And, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know, this is, uh, this is something different. You know, at that time I was, I was in the streets and all, all I knew was, uh, you know, what I knew from what I knew it from. And I had never seen money. I didn't know what money looked like. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, when I tell you them, them, them young men changed my life at the time, I, you know, I went from, you know, being at home with moms and outside with the homies to a hey, rock count that $3 million in that duffel or count, you know, pull that and, and then it, you know, Damn. changed my life. That's changed crazy. my life. Yeah, it changed my life. So were you ever in BMF? Oh, yes, most definitely. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> listen, I, listen, I, I, listen, just imagine, I'm, not, I'm 19 at the time. Yeah. I'm going to this house. Right. I'm, I already don't live nowhere. I'm just yeah. outside. You know what I mean? I'm staying with the homies. We back and forth. I didn't leave that house, bro. When right. I got to that house, <laughs> right. I never left. Right. That day? Listen, I never left. Wow. I stayed there. Yeah. I stayed in that house. Wow. So from that day on, my homies came to that house. Wow. People came and visited me at that house. That right. was a part of that's that changed my life. Right. Yeah, that changed my life. Yeah, shout out to Pops. You yeah. know what I mean? That was, that's huge. That was a blessing. Yeah, so that's how I met Big Meach. I met Big Meach that way and that was a uh, Man, you know, oh my God, bro! I thought money grew on trees. Let me uh, tell you that—that that was the gift and the curse of my life. I'm, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys: to be able to see that type of money, to be around that type of money, to drive what you wanted to drive, to ask somebody for whatever you wanted and you would get it. To you know, waking up one day and you know we packing up stuff and we driving around for four hours to make sure the feds ain't following us. It was yeah. a you know, then everybody goes to jail and yeah. the money's not coming in. And then it's like, oh, shit, that wasn't that's not how life is for real. Right. Like yeah. That's not real life. Right. That was real life at the moment. But, you know, for an everyday person, that's not real life. It was that was hard. It was a hard transition. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but, you know, we figured it out. So speaking of that, so where you are in your life right now, is there anything you would do different up to this point? If you can go back and change it, what would you do different? The, there's not things that I would do different, right? I, I, I respect the things that I've done to get to where I've got where I've gotten to. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I might have done things as a young man that I, you know, wish didn't go a certain way. You know what I mean? At that day and time. But growing up in an environment where I grew up in, you know, sometimes those are the circumstances. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, do I have regrets? Yeah, I got some. Uh -huh. I got regrets. Right. Would I do them differently? I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Okay. At, at this enough. point in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere where I have, you know, uh, uh, a wonderful team. I got a wonderful boss in fifty. Right. I got, got wonderful clients. You know what I mean? Life is amazing yeah. at this point in my life. Yeah. Right. So I wouldn't change anything. The hardships and the and the decisions that I made that weren't the best allow me now to not only recorrect mine but make sure right. that other people don't go down the same path right. and you know so and, and that's why i asked you that because like in the music obviously the street life is glorified yes even going to prison is glorified yes like nobody talks about the, the you know the the um the ramifications of it like yeah it's detrimental your, your, your mom's mm -hmm. getting kicked out of the house now your girl left. yeah you, you can't pay for your kid's school oh no it's detrimental. everybody's going no there's no music about that no it's all about that the good life, the good part of it. No, and that's the reason why I asked that. I mean, you know why? Because when you're young, you don't really understand what you signing up for. If that makes sense, right? Uh -huh. Right. If you're from LA, you pick a, you pick a color. Uh -huh. You know, it's red or blue, and you pick it, and you and you accept what comes with that. But when you sign on that dotted line, or you go get jumped in at the park, or you do whatever is necessary for you to get put on, um, nobody tells you them hard nights. 
Nobody tells you what being shot at looks like or feels like. Nobody tells you what being stabbed feels like or having to stab somebody. Or nobody tells you, you know, with with those days where it's you in a cell and no letters are coming and you have nobody to call on. Those nights come with that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it. are things going to change? We hope so. Yeah. Are they probably going to change? Probably not. Right. The ones that we can help, we should help. Right. The ones that want to listen, we should give the game to. Mm-hmm. Right. The ones that don't, sometimes people got to bump their own head to get to where they get to in life. So, right. you know. So you manage Lil Meech. Is this basically Big Meech entrusting you with his son or his son's career? Because yeah. I know that. Well, at the time. At, at the, the time. time. So at okay. the time, I was managing Little Meech. Okay. okay. So I don't manage Little Meech anymore at this moment. Okay. Right. Okay. But, uh, you know, at the time, well, yes, happened? a what thousand happened? percent. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was a plethora of things. It was, I was consistently on set, you know, which was time consuming for me. You know what I mean? To be on set. I was on set for, you know, BMF for two consecutive years Mm -hmm. every day. You know, I was with them a whole lot. Um, I, I need wiggle room, you know, for me, I need wiggle room. So, you know, it, you okay. Know. Okay. We might need to edit a little bit of that, but you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. Well, back to the the question. <laughs> Offline. What, I, what what was the what was yeah. the the initial thing being that you had a relationship with Meech? Yeah, yeah. His father definitely definitely trusted me. Yeah. You know, what I mean, he his father loves his son, talks to his son consistently mm-hmm. on a day to day basis. I at the time I was talking to him consistently, you know, mm-hmm. on a day to day basis, and um. Yeah, no, it was it was trust. It was trust from him. It was trust from Fifty, right. um, and it also was the work the work that I put in. You know what I mean? Yeah. If Fifty gave me a task, I, I was up for it, and I would call Fifty's phone all the time. Hey, yeah. Five, what do I do? Right. Five, how do I get this done? What, this doesn't seem like it's going right. Is, is everything okay? And he'd be like, Rocket, it's good. Like, yeah. you keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's gonna work. You know what I mean? He. It, 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 bro, it, it came out of the blue. He, he called me and told me to go meet with this guy named Anil Kurian, who at the time worked for uh, worked for G Unit Films, and I, it went from a dinner or a lunch with Anil to premiere Atlanta. Yeah, you know, it was yeah, it was bro, it was iconic. Yeah, it was iconic. I can't lie to you. So Fifth wrote a book with Robert Greene. He's one of my favorite authors. What has he taught you? Because he's got a lot of wisdom. Anything in particular, any particular wisdom he's imparted on you? Um, the the times that I talk to Fifth, you know, sometimes they're long conversations. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're really long conversations. Sometimes they're short. Um, what he teaches you is patience, right? Mm-hmm. Fifth is a master of patience. He's a master of time. He knows when and when not to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as a man, that's, that's hard to master, you know, especially when you you know, come from certain environments, your emotions are high when you hear things or see certain things and you want to respond a certain way. He's he's mastered patience. He's mastered the art of work ethic. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's taught me work work ethic. Mm-hmm. He's taught me uh he's taught me, you know, to be resilient. It's almost like um I, I feel like he gave me this breath of fresh air that that brought all that courage that I had as an artist back and, right. and is instilled in it into me as a manager. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's gave me this this reign to to call. I still get in awe when he picks up my call. You know what I mean? And he, and he picks it up usually often. Like there's only a few times that I call him and he doesn't call me back. And I'm still in awe of this of this man who's bigger than life, who I've been to Dubai with and seen him rock these shows or watch him walk into a room and people can't breathe because they like, man, it's fifth. And to see what he is, and, and that's what I'm mimicking, what I want to be, you know, Fifth came from outside. If y'all know his New York story. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Of course. Know, I mean, right. We lived it. Lived it. Yeah. Right. So speaking of Fifth, do you remember your first encounter with Fifth? Let's share that. Like, how did you even get on his radar? What's the beginning of that? My first encounter with uh, <laughs> with Fifth was in L.A. Okay. I was at a Dr. Dre Kush video shoot. Mm. I was on the outskirts of the video shoot. I had a few... Um, a few homies with me at the time. We just kind of mm-hmm. outside hanging out. Right. Uh, he drives by in this blue Lamborghini. Right. I think there was a Your favorite a, color. A, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Um, there was a, a, a black Phantom or, or uh, it was a black rose behind him. So we see him. 
didn't, we didn't know. know it was 50 at the time, but we see the car drive by. Of course, in L.A., you just watching every car to drive by. Right. Um, um, it's a blue lamb. He sticks his head out. He's looking around. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Uh, he turns into the parking lot, which now we on super stand guard. Like, what the fuck pulling up? Like, it's five, six, eight niggas outside. There's some others in the corner. Like, we outside. Right. He pulls up and he like, hey, what's up? We like, what up? He like, where the video shoot? We like, up the street. He gets out the car. Hey, what's up? I'm fifty. Right. We like, bro, we we know, nigga. Right, now you know we, yeah, we know. But right. it it was my first experience of. I think that's documented online somewhere too. Right. You might be able to find that clip online. Okay. When he's actually um, driving by. When he's actually driving by, and, and I think the aftermath of, of of my response of just him doing what he did. Right. But um, yeah, that was my first initial, you know, uh, meeting with Fifty, and my respect for him has always been there. But that put him top tier in my category right. for that. Just. He, he's a people's person, you know what I mean? He's, he's he really pull, is. He pulls up on you. He really is. Yeah. He really is. And he's not if he don't want to be neither. Like, right. it's two sides to the... But, yeah, he's a people's person for sure. And I can see sure. you hanging around him has really rubbed off because 50 is on time for everything. So, I want to thank definitely. you for being on time. Most <laughs> definitely. <laughs> early. Most, early. Hey, most no, matter of fact, he wasn't on time. You was early. Facts. Yeah. And 50 is always early for everything. Yeah. A lot on, of people don't know that about him. On the TV set, listen, if you're late, then you getting, you know, oh, yeah. you, you mess up a whole show. Everybody gets paid when you're late. Mm. They don't stop the show because you're late. Right. So right, you, right. yeah, you really don't want to be late. So yeah, no, nah, I did. Man, Fitz rubbed off on me tremendously, bro. Tremendously. I'm gonna have to pause you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pause you on that. Yeah, one. yeah, no, no, no. Listen, <laughs> big pause, big pause, big pause. But yeah, you know what I meant. Though. I know what you know you're what saying. I, mean. I know yeah. what you're saying. Facts. Right, I know right, what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah I know big what you're saying. Pause, you know. But the youngest, we immature here. But do the youngest know what pause is? They do. They do. They will pause you in a minute in New York. In New York, they will. Yeah, they is? Now you got to be conscious about it. Yeah, I'm saying, all right, man. I ain't mean to do that. I'm pausing everybody. I don't hear you do that. I can't even have a conversation with I really should have did that. No, you had to. You had to. Now I took yeah. a serious conversation. Yeah, no, no. Now you do it. Now you need that. How you that. feeling? Pause. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Oh, y'all can't wait for the next pause moment. I'm over here like, yeah. Nah, nah. Be free. Pause. Nah, let me stop. Oh, no, 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 let me stop. Yeah. But yo, so let's go back a little bit okay. to when you were rapping. Like you was outside, outside. Um I was signing Young Jeezy. You were signing Young Jeezy. Yeah. Now, my first thoughts were Young Jeezy, BMF. Young Jeezy was like the rapper of BMF before they started that getting blue and blue da Vinci and all that. Well well blue was there. No, to take note. He you know, was there. To take no shade from Blue. Okay. Yeah, blue, Blue, Blue has always been there. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? Like I'm not, you know, but yes. But but Jeezy, Jeezy kind of had that flag worldwide. No, Jeezy was the one though. Yeah. Yeah. Jeezy was the one. If you if you child. if you were around in that yeah. era, mm -hmm. Jeezy was the one. Like yeah. Jeezy, Jeezy was the one. Musically, yeah. he was yeah for music phenomenal. Jeezy, yeah, for music, he's he was phenomenal. definitely the one. That's hands down. It was crazy because back in those days, we were we we were, you know, in the in the strip clubs. Yeah. When, when Jeezy and BMF. We're, yeah, I was there. Yes, in the club, and they just throwing all this money. Yes, I mean, I, yo, to this day, I can't imagine the money that had to be circulating because I'm wanting to pick the money up. <laughs> that's that's facts. how much money was. Yeah, no, and, and I know people that did pick the money up. Facts. And if they and if we saw you picking the money up, you was getting boo bop bop. <laughs> Anybody that picked the money up, like no, for real, like they. Yeah, you thought about picking the money up? No, I never had no, 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 listen, he listen, pick the no, money no, up. No, but listen, though, no, listen. The, the first time I went to the strip club, right. I think, did he give me like 7000 One of the big homies gave me like 7000 Okay. Right. right. And this is my first time out with them at a strip club. Right. Yeah. My first initial thought was keep that money. I'm pocket. from L.A. We don't right. throw no money. That's, right. that's what we don't do that. Hey, yeah. sure right. Until tapped me on the shoulder and said, money grows on trees over here. Go ahead and let that go. Ahead and let yeah. that, go ahead. that little seven, don't worry about that. Right. Seven okay. million in that Delta. Right, tripping. right, right. Yeah, that was, that was my experience. <laughs> so how did you get on Jeezy's radar? How did that how did that happen? Um I got the unsigned unsigned hype in the source, if y'all remember that. Of course. Back in the day. Of course. Of course. Come that on, was, that was the Bible for hip hop. Listen, yeah. so for me as an as an artist, that was probably one of my biggest moments in the career to have the unsigned hype in right. the source. Like yeah. it was it was, I think Ryan Ford might have been okay. the guy who did my article okay. that day. Uh, Ryan you know, Ford, shout yeah, out to you him. Do you remember the yeah. issue you were in? I don't remember the issue, but I, I do have that blew up somewhere. Who was on the, do you know who was on the cover? Who was on the that? cover? I still got it. You know what? It might have been 
the cover of that source might have been the South with uh, uh, Texas. Texas, it been, oh, the Texas oh. edition. It might have been a Texas it was a edition. It was the yeah, that might have been a Texas. Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. Okay. That was, I, 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 okay. I still got it, but I got to find we it. We got but. something to comment in that same section. It was for the DJs telling the tape. I had my mixtape in there for the best mixtape. Oh, man, come on uh, in. Come on in. <laughs> Going way look, back. Look it up. DJ yes, Thor, look it up. That's so, yeah, sure. that was my that was my first big, uh, you know, kind of rapper moment for me. Okay. And then um, Jeezy was already coming to the house. I didn't even know who Jeezy, like in the... No disrespect to nobody, but in the West Coast, we listen to West Coast music uh-huh. for, the, for, the, for the majority. You're going to go there, too, but yeah, go ahead. For the majority part, mm-hmm. we listen to West Coast music. Uh-huh. I was still listening to Dre, Snoop, Q, you know what uh-huh. I mean? I'm listening to that, uh-huh. and my music reflected that. Okay. Game at the time was was doing this thing. Um, so, yeah, we listen to West Coast music. So I really didn't know who and how big Jeezy was. Until, you know, he was already coming to the house. I knew he was getting money. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He was exactly who he said he was. He, mm-hmm. he was definitely outside. He mm-hmm. was not, he was outside. Um, and he came to the house. I, I think I rapped for him a few times. And after that, it was, you know, yeah, I thought my life was different forever. I was signed to Young Jeezy. Like, yeah. before it was, like, I'm talking about, I'm Jeezy when Coach K is running around the office. You know what I mean? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm that Jeezy. I'm, I'm Jeezy when it's Slick Puller and Blood yeah. Raw Jeezy. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm there from the from the beginning of the trenches when it was, yeah, I was there there. Like, Do you remember the rap you spit the Jeezy, the first rap? Do we, do we remember that? Nah, you know what? Because because <laughs> back in the day, I didn't write. I you didn't write. I, so I, I never wrote. You were just going off the top. Yeah, it was all, for me. It was always off the top. Okay. I, I could I could rhyme and say the rhyme over and over again, and then remember the rhyme, and then mm. go in there later. Okay. That was all. That, you know what right. I mean? Writing for me always took too much time. I felt like I can go in there and knock it out. So you know, I was, okay. I've been doing that since the, since that when I was rapping. So I reread the article. On, on, on all hip hop, the last I think it might have been the last one you did with us, yeah. and you detailed the departure, yeah, and and what led to it, what led up to it, which was kind of more important. Um, I don't know if you want to re regurgitate that. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'm, yeah, yeah, listen, I mean, we we grown at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, Jeezy was a phenomenal artist. He was a uh, an incredible, incredible influence at the time for not only the, the music game, but for us being signed to him. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, he's a terrible businessman. Mm-hmm. He might be an amazing one now. And this is no mm-hmm. shade on what he's doing because he's mm-hmm. probably doing phenomenal in what he's doing. Yeah. I actually mm-hmm. just seen him uh, three weeks ago in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Said what up? You know yeah. what I mean? I, it's, it's no love lost. Yeah. But at the time, I just felt like, you know, he was, you know, embedded in his music career. Uh-huh. So that's why music careers right. around him at the time c- couldn't flourish. Right. Right. But as being young and energetic and, you know, we didn't see it like that at the time. We just saw it as, bro, you got all these dudes around you with this amazing talent. Why uh-huh. are you not doing it? Why Why are we not G-Unit or why are we not, you know, right. them over there when we uh-huh. got this talent? I mean... I was pushing on my own. Slick Puller had his own buzz. Blood Raw was at the time was murdering Florida. Yeah. He was the man. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And it, the 211 was, was another West Coast counterpart right. of mine. And we, we had something special. Yeah. Like, right. He just, you know, he was. He, I, Do you think it's because um, it almost, almost every time an artist signs another artist, it never works out because it's ego, it's ego driven, wherever the artist, he's not going to get bigger than me. I'm going to keep him right here. Was that kind of the case? I mean, I would say so, to be honest with you. I, I would say so. I, I would say, uh, and I don't think that he thought we were, any of us were bigger than him. So I don't want to get that misconstrued. But I just, I just feel like when an artist is in his artist space, if you're not, you know, at a place where you are ready to elevate the people around you, you can't do it. Yeah. But, but, but it hurts because at the same time, fifth got his squad everywhere. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you watching other successful People right. do it, mm-hmm. so it's you know it's right. it's hurting. We like, bro. Yeah, you have to be unselfish. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's um yeah that that was a that was a, a it used to be a sensitive time in my life. I, I don't want to say it was a bad time, but it used to make me feel some kind of way. Right. But I don't feel no kind of way. What, no what more. year did you leave? What year was that? About what? Oh seven, oh eight, oh seven, oh eight, six, oh eight. Yeah, oh six, six oh seven, seven, something like okay. that. It was yeah. Yeah. It was something like that. It was early. And, it, and I um 
man, I had a I had a lot more fire in me back then. And I yeah. just you know, I was You was a wild guy, man. Yeah, I had a lot more fire in me and I and I just felt uh I just I felt disrespected by it. I felt like and I and I, I felt like me and him ties should have been deeper, right? Mm-hmm. right? I felt like you from BMF, right? Mm-hmm. Like we this is a brotherhood, like yeah. Oh, this is the mafia. This is what we do. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, yeah. In my mind, I'm thinking, right. you know, if right. you own the shop and I'm cooking in the shop, are you going to pay me well because I'm the cook of the shop of the mafia? Right. Yeah. Right. And it just, you know, it just wasn't what I Let me ask you this, because I want to be fair to Jeezy, too. Yeah, for sure. A thousand percent. Yeah. So how much of the blame do you shoulder for it? A thousand percent. I, what could you I, have done different? I have, I have blame because at the time, I, you know, I spaz, I would spaz on things that maybe I shouldn't have spazzed on. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I didn't look at things from a bigger picture, but mm-hmm. then now as time passed, I feel like I was right because it's not like, okay. you know, yeah. it's not like he blew up another artist that he just made a mega star. Right. So, gotcha. but I, but I was at fault too. Right. I, yeah. listen, I think we all were, when you young bro and you just outside, it's just, you know, the decisions you make and the, in the energy that you encounter is so, Spontaneous and so yeah. ambitious, and it's so you know it's just it's it's just a passion that you have when right. you just you know when you young it's just I, this is all I see yeah mm-hmm. and I felt like he didn't see what we saw right right and then it all crumbled right but he still right. managed to be you know yeah at the top but you know to make a short story shorter I, as as I believe in God I'm not trying to you know get in nobody's religious beliefs but my time there as now being a manager wasn't to watch Jeezy it was to watch Coach. Right, right. Now, mm. that now that I see the vision, to 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 say that I've been in the same room, right, and still talk to Coach whenever I get a chance on Instagram, you yeah. know what I mean? We chop it up, but to say that I've been there and watch Coach, who is a genius for yeah. those who don't know, right? Yeah. Coach K is a genius. Yeah. Coach K knows how to uh, uh, make and build yeah. somebody that is a superstar into a megastar, right? You right. need these ingredients. Mm-hmm. Like, you need these ingredients. Yeah. Right. So I got to see Coach K firsthand. Right. And that was my blessing out of that whole ordeal. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I got to see the the, the Shaka Zulus. I got yeah. to, you know, I got yeah. to see the Clays. You know yes. what I mean? Rest so now peace. that, now yeah. that R.I.P. Clay, um, so now that I'm in this management role, I've been groomed by the best. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Right. I, I've been groomed. Big Meech himself is a manager if you ever want to really look at it. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody around Big Meech won. Mm-hmm. Anybody that ever encountered that man, he blessed. He helped become better by doing something else. Yeah. I, you know, I've been groomed and, and been blessed to be in rooms with with men that, that I, I see now why I was there. You right. know what I mean? I wasn't there for the music. I was there for the knowledge. No. Yeah. The yeah. knowledge now gives me the knowledge to give back today to make sure that these guys see that you are more than just what they say you are right. or mm-hmm. we say you are or people think you are. Right. And uh, now got the best mentor in the game with 50. I mean, who who... What what? I, listen, to be honest, I got a dream team. I can't, the '92 I can't. dream team is really right. bro. I've 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 rocked with Big Meech. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm I'm running around here with 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 the boss dog, Five O. Mm-hmm. I've I've I was at the height of Jeezy's career. I saw it, bro. Yeah. I saw yeah. it at the top. I'm talking about. I seen it. I seen when the when the crowd. I've been on a lot of stages. Jeezy had a stage lit like no other. Yeah. At one time in 05 or 04, every car that drove by was playing Trap or Die, wow, that's bro. A fact. There's <laughs> no Instagram video on that. I saw it visually. I yeah. saw man, bro, I've I've been around a dream team. Yeah. I've been around a dream team. And even before that, in my LA days, RP Nipsey it. Hustle. Oh, yeah. Talk, yeah, about, talk about, about it. Man, he's in my they, like, bro, these are my like, you know, I've I've shook hands with men that the hands could never shake again. That's your peers. Right. Yeah. So you know, that was, you know, rap wasn't my purpose. This, this is my purpose. My purpose is to make sure that we, you know, as men, black men, specifically in moments, understand that what we're doing is not just all we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. An athlete is not just an athlete. You are a mega star. Right. Mm-hmm. If you can dunk a ball, you read some books, you can run a business. If you can mm-hmm. run a business, you can employ your mother. If you can employ your mother, you can employ your cousin. Mm-hmm. You employ your cousin, and now we are... Generational wealthy. We are yeah. now recreating our yeah. generational, generational wealth. wealth. This is what we're doing. And that, that, is what I, that is what I'm doing at this moment. I'm, I have clients that 
do a multitude of things now. Right. We just don't catch footballs anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we catching a whole lot of other stuff on the back end. Right. These men just don't run routes. They running businesses. Yeah. Right. They're running new careers. You know right. what I mean? These actors just aren't actors anymore. They're mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. These yeah. rappers just aren't laying bars. They are entrepreneurs. Right. And it's, it's, it's important that you see that. And I feel like it takes somebody that's been around that, that have saw that. I saw yeah. Big Meech be an entrepreneur. I saw Jeezy Snowman t-shirts sell like crack crazy. cocaine. That was yeah. crazy. I saw that mm-hmm. t-shirt sell more than eight balls of cocaine. Mm. Right. That's a fact. Come on. Like, I'm yeah. for real, that is entrepreneurship. Yeah. 50 is an entrepreneur. Who, yeah. who Vitamin water was the first knock over the head, and that's just what he let us see. Yeah. Right. So, right. you know, I, I feel like I've been groomed by, you know, the best to be qualified to to do what I do. And, you know, 50 as a mentor has let me walk in some of these rooms and close deals that I had to go in the car and scream about. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, you know, I was I was cool in the meeting. Right. But when I got into the car, I'm like, oh, we doing this shit. Right. We doing this shit. Right. You know what I mean? That 250 came out the deal. It didn't come from that. That was right. a whole different, you right. know, a whole different monster for me. So, yeah, management is my life, man. I love it. I love nice. it. You were an artist with Rick Ross for a while yeah, too, I, right? I, I um I got a few records with with Ross. Uh, yeah, you know Ross was always good to me. Yeah, you know you know we uh when we were doing what we were doing I think at that time he, he was just starting the uh the MMG group with uh Peel I think Peel was on it at the time. Oh yeah, but, but Peel before from it was Atlanta. Wale, it was Peel. Right, yep. it was Peel, Meek, Torch, Torch, yeah. Stolly. Yeah, Stiley. Gunplay was on it too. Gunplay was Gunplay. in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh yeah, yeah. We had we had we definitely had a few records together. We had a few good run ins. Uh you know. I you know, you know, I gotta just say this real quick. Yo, you you were a dope rapper. And it, it, it's crazy to see still how the game is yeah, still. Yeah, I'm, I'm you, still harder than you that. Still, <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying I'm though, the game is so crazy because you can see <laughs> and your body of work is solid, right? Like yeah. we we could t- have that conversation. You got records with Nipsey, Ross, J Rock, but your is- your own records stand drama. You know they stand yeah. on their own too. Yeah, I, just you you know what it is for me. Um, what I what I've endured in this rap business, and I'm keeping your word still means something to me, mm, right? Yeah, and I know I shouldn't take it personal. Yeah. And I know it's not personal because right. I understand the rap business. So right. when somebody says, oh, we might let's let's get up tomorrow. Right. And, you know, you got a flight tomorrow. <laughs> right. But you hit me with the let's get up tomorrow. Right. Right. <laughs> that still rubs me the wrong way. Right. right. And I know it shouldn't. And, yeah. I, and it shouldn't. Right. But it, but at least in business, I can put it in black and white and we ain't got to play those games. Right. right. Everything that I say, I mean, is right here on this paper. Mm-hmm. So if we agree to this, then you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, rap is so full of. Uh, oh, my God. The. Yeah, man, these niggas is different. Hey, I didn't take it personal when you ain't respond to my <laughs> Happy New Year text. <laughs> yeah, this listen, year. Yeah. Listen, see? <laughs> and I really just saw it when I just did that. That's the crazy part. I really didn't need that's the crazy part. No, he was hacked. He didn't get it. Okay, so hey, I, I was had nigga hack me. <laughs> he was hacked. <laughs> Joke from earlier, y'all. Yeah, low key. Low key. <laughs> nah. Did you okay, I, not to bring Lil' Meach back up, but he, he used to rap. Yeah. Were you dealing with him when he used to rap? No, no, no. Okay. He, he had a uh, he had another manager prior to. Okay. I, I, he still was in the in the circle. Like I was still yeah. talking to him when he was rapping. Okay. But rapping wasn't his passion. Okay. You know what? Listen, at the time, uh, Little Meech's passion was just to acknowledge who his father was uh-huh. and to give his father a good representation. Okay. That's what his passion yeah. was. Right. He wasn't. Looking for something in particular, he was just looking for something, mm-hmm. and the right opportunities he was gonna go for him. Yeah, he 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 was uh he was just looking and it came. But yeah, rap he wasn't in love with rap. That's yeah. not wasn't what he. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you. When I saw his um airport video, I thought of you. I was like, <laughs> you knew I wasn't there. Yeah, you I was knew that. like, where's Rocket? Because yeah. this wouldn't. Yeah. I didn't. I at the time didn't know you weren't dealing with him, but I was yeah. like, where is he? Because yeah. this. Like in my head now, I'm like, this would never happen. In yeah, <sighs> man, he, he's still a young man, yeah. right? He's still a young man, and he's right. figuring out life right. yeah. under a spotlight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's hard. Um, that's tough. I'm not making no excuses for nobody. Yeah, yeah. because you reap what you sow if yeah. you 
if it was there last night and you ain't checked the bag or they didn't check the bag, shit come with it. You that it's a learning lesson. Could have mm-hmm. been worse. Could have been worse. But I mean, he's still a young man trying yeah. to find his way. And yeah. and you know, with that comes obstacles. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, no more. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, no more. He learned. He but it's a, it's a, it's a lot of man. It's a lot of guy. John Moran is having the same problem. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. God. Why, why, why are we him? seeing this so much? Why, why are we seeing this so much? I mean, we, we all know the 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 deal. Yeah. We know the deal. Yeah. I, th- I think we impart wisdom on the younger, younger generation, right? Like no, the young. You need you you. <sighs> You need guidance. You listen. Guidance. You Let's have talk to about have it. Guidance, right? Yeah. All greatness comes with guidance. We we're right. kind of speaking on this earlier, yeah. and and guidance uh, can come in many forms, uh-huh. right? For me, guidance is management. Also, that is part of management, right? Uh-huh. Um, all great managers around the world know how to make something happen. You know, either go away or fix it, or right. or or even take the blame of things. But these young men need guidance, bro. You need yeah. guide because technically. Ja, as a legal citizen, is uh-huh. in right to have a gun, right? Uh-huh. Technically. Uh-huh. Technically. Uh-huh. Technically. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. He can have a thousand guns, Correct. right? Uh-huh. There's Correct. black, Asian, white people with a million guns that show it on Instagram all the time. Uh-huh. Correct. But they're not in the NBA. Ja's in the NBA. Right. Ja's profession allows it's him to be in the spotlight. And you can't do that. So you, exactly, those things you can't do. Right. But now if his mindset at the moment was, I, I'm not doing nothing wrong because this is legal. I get it, but that's where the guidance comes in at. Right. You need someone to sit down and tell you, this is why you can't. This is why this is so important because you are more than a basketball player. Right. That's why you can't just show the gun, yeah. right? Because now they took basketball away and now made you a bad influence. Mm-hmm. Now you're not even a ball player. You're just a bad influence. Yeah. Right. Look at this guy who got the world on his on his shoulders. He running around showing these guns. But... but that doesn't mean he's not a good person. Right. Right. It means he needs a little more guidance. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why management is important. Yeah. People, you know, that you know what what's just crazy to me? <laughs> People that spend money on a you spend all your money on a new car, you spend money on a great house, right? Preach. You spend you spend money on a on, on on all these things, but you won't spend money on the things that give you guidance, right? If you have money, you should have a CPA. Right. Yeah. He gives you guidance. Right. Spend the money on the CPA. Mm-hmm. If you got money, you should have a manager. Doesn't mean he needs to manage your entire life. Doesn't right. mean he needs to do everything for you. Right. But you need management in different ways. You need people that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. You need influencers that can guide you right. and mm-hmm. trust they word, bro. Then, then we don't have these these situations. But yeah, Ja, like everybody else, they, they need somebody and nine times out of ten it's not your parents right yeah. because a, a young man and his parent that's not who you really listen to let's keep it real <laughs> right. you know the, the guidance that i was getting was real game from from my people but it wasn't game that i was soaking in right. i was soaking in game from the block so yeah. you need somebody that they feel that they have the respect for that can also give them influence and guidance on why this isn't important so that if he wants to go to the gun range and go crazy he has every right to we just can't wave them on TikTok. We can't wave them on Instagram. Right. You know what I mean? We can't get caught in the airport with them. But this is what we can't do, right? right? Because you are more than an actor. You are more than a ball player. Right. Yeah. You are more than. And it's yeah. important that we realize that as men, you are more than. I know. And getting caught up in a moment is huge, bro. When you yeah. got a Nike contract, you're dunking balls, you're dunking on everybody. You're like, I'm on top of the world. Yeah. Right. Can't say shit to me. Right. Yeah, you mad at this gun? My bank account still say 120 million. Right. But it's about guy because that can go too well, without that, the proper and guidance. It's, and it's going. It's been going without the proper yeah. guidance. Yeah, it's right? been going. Yeah. Pay for guidance instead of paying an attorney. And I know my attorneys aren't going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> pay for guidance. You're right. It's, it's a lot cheaper to have somebody say, hey. You know what? Come holler at me, big dog. I, yeah. I need some. I, just let me take you to dinner. Yeah. I need you to talk to me about some. Mm-hmm. That dinner might cost me a million dollars in lawyer fees. Right. I'd rather mm-hmm. call fifth before I jump out the window. Yeah. His conversation can save me a lifetime in prison. Right. A lifetime in fucking up my career. Yeah. You need guidance, and I right. feel like the young guys don't know that they need guidance because who's guiding them? Yeah. Who's out here? Who's really stepping up? The t- OGs at faults too. Because now we don't take the chances that we would have took back in the day. Now it's, uh-huh. I, now we rather wash our hands with them. Mm. Ah, man, bro, I ain't finna listen. I ain't finna go out my mm. way. Ah, man, homie too, man, homie too far gone. I'm a, mm. Nah, you OG, step in the ring. Mm. And b- bumps and bruises come with that too. Yeah. 
Walk with the man. Mm. Now, if he too far gone and it just don't work, wash your hands. But that don't mean we don't try with the we next try. one. Right. 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 We don't try right. with the next one. Wow. And that's that's yeah. that's you know that's that's my whole vision out here, man. That's my right. whole vision is to just show, you know, athletes, actors, entertainers, rappers right. that you are more than what you think you are. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, I, I manage uh, this clothing line. Sorry, I was trapping. I don't really like to talk about the, the people that I do manage, but mm-hmm. um, the sorry, I was trapping clothing line for the last two years. Bro, we have been doing phenomenal numbers. Uh-huh. I'm talking about phenomenal numbers. You know what I mean? Right. Sam is now starting to gross over a million dollars a year, uh-huh. which is crazy. Shout Fat- out to Sam. Yeah, shout, shout out to Sam. Yeah, shout, shout out to, to Sam. Sam. Um, we do have a lawsuit going on Fashion Nova right now. Oh, snap. Um, what happened? So Fashion Nova, bro, tried to just try to sun us, really. Yeah. It was like, yeah, you, you know, young black entrepreneur, clothing line. Mm-hmm. You ain't mm-hmm. shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. you making your little money. We like your design. They took the design, sold it on their website, website verbatim. I'm talking about didn't even change nothing. Mm. Like, yeah, I love that shirt. That's my shirt. I'm selling you it selling on this them? corner. Rob by and look at it every day because I got <laughs> more. I got more goons than you. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Right. We sent the cease and desist letter. They balled it up, threw it in the trash. Stop mm. playing with us, big dog money. Wow. I'm talking about. So now we gonna play ball. Wow. Because at the end of the day, he's more than just a designer, right? He's a yeah. businessman. Yeah. There's no reason that you should take money out of that man's son's mouth right. because you are a bigger corporation, right? right? And, I, and we had these conversations. You have to be just more than the design. You got to stand up for what right. you believe in. This is mm-hmm. my company. That's yeah. my that he owns that company. I manage that man. Yeah. We go on a war about it, yeah. right? That mm-hmm. was his ideas. Those are his his thoughts, his passions, his work ethic. Are you, we're not finna let you just take that from us. Right. So we'll go to war, and if you know it gets too hectic, I'll call fifth, and we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much y'all suing for? I... He shouldn't say. Come on, Sam. <laughs> it's a couple of M's. ten million. Ten million. Ten million. Okay. <laughs> ten million. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not twenty million? Twenty million sounds better right, than see, ten. There it is. <laughs> I, need, I need my ten percent. You need your ten percent. <laughs> I got you. There it is. I love it. One of them didn't pay you. I love it. Good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> nah, but 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 that's that's an important thing, right? Because now you know when you start talking about hip hop, let's talk. Let's talk hip hop. Let's talk hip hop. Let's talk hip hop. Let's, let's transition. It's the lane. It's the so, lane. What, what do you feel is the state of affairs right now? We're we're looking at a weird, weird, weird time. It's not really bad, but it's just different. You know, it's different. Back in the day, you know, I don't even like back in the day. Forget, yeah. forget, let's not do that. But let's just say that in the last couple of years, really, it has changed dramatically. And, and I think power is, no pun intended, power is the the difference. It's a shift in power, I think, from where we used to be, at least in the music industry. Um. There's so many talented artists today, right? I'm talking about these these young men and women today are like phenomenally talented. Right. Like it, it, it as we as, as we've always been, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. But they are just displaying it now. You got Instagram, you got you know, Twitter's, Facebook, etc. Whatever platform you choose right. to you know showcase yourself. So they have this outlet. So we see these talents every day. What we also see is lack of artist development. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Facts. Right. Yeah. Right. When you when you go back to the gold days, mm-hmm. when, you, when you look at the umbrellas that people used to come under, mm-hmm. which was artist development, like Dr. Dre is a super producer. He's a phenomenal artist, but he's a phenomenal artist developer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He develops artists. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. When you go back and you look at these guys that come in these studios and, and they have the courage to tell you that's not it. Right. No, 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 no. That needs a bridge. Right. That needs a hook. That need, you need to mellow that down. You need to turn that up. That is all a part of artist development. Also, how you act outside of this yeah. is artist development. Right. Right. You are an artist. No, you cannot go do that. Yeah. Right. No, we're not oversaturating this. Or we are going to push. That's all artist development. I feel like now the day and age is just giving us the freedom to say, we're going to try what we want. I'm going to do what I want. And I got the money. Right. And you either owed him or owed her. So mm-hmm. I don't right. really care what you're talking about. Right. right. And I feel like it's hurt the game. It does, because from that, we get no classic albums. Mm. No, we have none. We have none. I agree. Can anybody name a classic album out right now? A cl- that's just cla- top just to bottom classic. Classic. 
we don't get that no more. Nah, there's a lot of good albums. Yeah, good, but classic. It's two different things. That's true. It's no classic That's true. stuff being made. That's true. Uh, you, let me give you real quick though. I left. I was with. I was with Dave East last night. Okay. okay. Shout out to East. Shout, Shout out to East. East. Play me the. Play me the album. Okay. 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 Listen, I, I don't even know. Just just know Dave has went in the back in time to make sure that this album was seen as something that's trying to be a classic. Okay. Right. He's tapped into roots that you guys are going to be impressed with. You're going to okay. be like, wait, hold on. So who did? Wait a minute. He went and sat and talked to who? Yeah. And I feel like that's the identity of creating to get a classic album. I feel like you got to follow, not copy, right. but follow the regimen of what makes a classic. Right. Well, yeah. You know, albums used to have substance, right? right? I used to can to like this album that I can bop to the whole time. And then I had another album song that would just be like, bro, I miss bro. I miss her. I miss him. Or right. I'm calling my mama or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I feel like albums now just all shoot them up, bang. We're gonna air it out. Right. We're gonna do it, and right. and I like those songs. I'm not right. knocking those oh, songs. We, we all love that. But but those artists still have days where they don't feel great, where they don't feel That's happy. So Me and he's talked about right. last night. If you have never rapped, or if you've never made it, if you've never been the one, you don't know what it feels like to have the pressures of the one. Meaning, if you are the breadwinner of your household, whether you play basketball, football, an actor, or rapper, there's feelings that you have as the one that weigh on these men and women's shoulders, right? That I feel like they should put in the music. Because when you are the one, when your phone rings, everybody wants something from you, Uh right? That's a feeling that you can only share with people that understand that. Right. And if you try to relay it in the music, maybe your family does understand when they hear this record. Right. Mm. Maybe the homies understand when they hear this record. Right. Maybe your BM or your girl, whoever understands when she hears this record. And I feel like those records need to be put out. And uh, me, he chopped it up about that last night. He's definitely he's definitely on that vibe. Okay. So, That's but yeah, when's the last classic rec- uh, uh, album was? We, we don't get that because everybody's copying something that's unrelated to them. You know, music yeah. should be an expression of your environment Facts. and your experience. Facts. So if I'm from the South Bronx Facts. and I see that somebody from Texas blew up, that's their... Facts. That's, you know, that's their story. Yeah, exactly. That's not what's For going sure. on over here, but they'll True. try to mimic it and True. it falls short. That's why you don't get classic Yeah, material. you can't... Listen, when you, when, you, when you think about platinum, right? Because I don't think people go platinum a lot anymore. If you do albums, platinum albums... This is a different albums, thing because it's streaming now, so it's hard to gauge all that. Yeah, it's but... but a I, physical copy. Yeah, yeah but, but, but we knew when it went... Platinum was the, the word for... Nigga, we everywhere. Right. And everybody knows it. You know right. what I mean? You just weren't in your section. Right. right. Platinum yeah. mean I can go to the East Coast or the West Coast or the right. South and you knew who this person was. So when you start talking about the you know, the classic here's from Nas to to Big to all to Hove to these guys that to DMX where it didn't matter where you lived, we played those records on right. the West Coast. Right. They were they were one of them one, but we knew where the, who they were when it came on. Right. I knew them was some New York niggas. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it. it. had a sound. I knew it. Right. They was hard. Yeah. Right. I you knew when that, that funk come on them some West, West Coast, Coast niggas. niggas. Right. Yeah. You West knew Coast. when they had a little swang to it. It right. had a little... Si- you knew You knew where it came from. Right. Now, you know... Yeah, do you feel that... I was glad we're touching on this. The identity of music, artists. You don't know where nobody's from no more. That's how I feel. Like, when I'm looking at artists now, like, they all... It's a homogenization. Like they all mirror but it, each other. But it's so different now, though, because the... The, the product, internet The, 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 internet, the, the internet, internet yeah. and now streaming services. Yeah. And, and, and like... Also, even the radio stations, like now the conglomerates good point, good point. are now playing the same right. thing in every city. I'm gonna it's a lot up. of different I'm gonna things. I'm going to fuck you up real quick. Yeah. K-Day. Damn. <laughs> K-Day. That's throwback. That's K-Day. LA. That's, throw, that's, A-day. That's, that's LA all day. You had to go to LA to hear certain artists that Facts. was from LA. Facts. You know what I mean? So you speak in Listen, the radio. And we still do that, though. Right. And I they want still you, do, still do not, that. Right. I know. You can't just still do you that. Can't, you, right. can't, you can't do that in um in LA. Yeah. Well, you can't do it. No, LA, we You can't play like a whole bunch of other people. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. We We still... Man, we bleed that West Coast shit for. I just want you know, just yeah, yeah. That's why we, I said I was you know, that yeah, one. that really like you know that shit. means something to us. Yeah. When we say we from the West, that kind of like right. So we, you know, we we live and die by it. Sometimes I think it it we get lost in that too. You can get lost in where you're from too, right. and you yeah. can sound so much like somebody else because that's our, you know, our, right. our our area. But nah, yeah, I, I feel like music now. Everybody, I don't know if you want to be pop. I don't even know if guys even understand what a BPM is anymore. Like right. that, like this is all from artist development again, though, right? right? right. Is it that the artists don't have the talent, or we have less developers? 
are the people developers. that can develop everybody aren't even rap. pitching in. Everybody right. wants to rap. Everybody wants to be the artist now. That's true. Who, who wants to be the all in the Quincy video. Jones? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all in the video. Yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, even Suge, Suge might have had bad tactics, but he had right. he had a plan he had of a like, yeah. yeah. And he developed. He developed. Did developed. he do the same thing? Yeah, I'm taking up. Yeah, 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 no, no, he, he did. did. He, listen, he developed. No, he did. He developed. Yeah, he, did. he developed. Yeah, he was yeah. you know, you know? I mean, well, where are the developers? Who is New York's developer right now? If you guys had to say, we got somebody in New York that's the developer. Who's you guys' number one developer? Who would that be? Is it still Diddy? Uh-uh. No. No one. I can't think. I may be I, wrong. I, can't, I, I, there, I can honestly say I can't name There somebody. is no one because nobody. There, New York, I can honestly say New York doesn't West have a Side song. Gun. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe West Side Gun, maybe like he's they they got a strong crew. They got a, they got a crew. You know what I'm saying? They got a crew. You bring in I mean, they got a Rome sound. Streets they, they and got a sound. They yeah, but sound. but 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 at the same time, we're. The scale is definitely not Death Row, Bad Boy, yeah. Rockefeller. Yeah, like it's, over, the, yeah. those days are done. So, so the real answer is no. That's so, the real. So answer. then, so then, what's the game plan? I, you know what, what I do see in New York now, though. What I do see, I see, I see the older New Yorkers coming together more. You know, I, mm-hmm. like I'm, if I go on Instagram, I'm seeing Jim Jones in the in the yeah. gym with. With Fab, Mano, Fab, Fab and then yeah. with Mano, Mano, shout out to Mano. They got a whole and album Dave coming East, up, by the way, too. And, and Dave, like, right. they, they're all in the gym together. So that shows camaraderie. Even yeah. the verses with Kiss that they did, like, that that right. was camaraderie, right? right? So now how does that bleed on to the younger, younger generation? Because usually when I think in New York, I be feeling like y'all at each other's throats all the time. I right. be feeling like y'all be tripping. Like They be tripping. Y'all be tripping. <laughs> they do because first, feel like. well, they, well, New York leads with, I'm better than you. That's... I'm a better rapper than you. I'm a better MC than you. So, am I right? No, you're right. It's yeah. always been competitive like that. It's always been. I'm I respect you. that yeah. though. The, the competitive nature should be there, so, but sometimes y'all be y'all. They're not even beefing about music no more. It's about nah. It's not nonsense. music no more. Now right. it's I can't. I, you know the drill is is different energy. That's a different energy. So that that is now the New York. They sound. can't. All the drill rappers cannot go to the gym together. Right, you know that's what I mean. True. Somebody will die. That's, that's true. Somebody will die. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's a fact. That's and that's true. not good. That's not good. And that shouldn't be celebrated. Yeah. That's not cool. You know what I mean? So that's that's where we. No, at. it's really not because yeah. because y'all got so much talent, and there's so much talent in jail now, or talent dead, and just right. yeah. like that's bro. That was never the case. Like when Big and Pop died, that was shocking. Yeah, if you were around at that time, that was. Devastating, yeah, right? That's a that fact. was almost like, whoa! Wait a minute, yeah. like, right? It was yeah. that, it was yeah. Really shocking. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't expect. die in hip hop. Like, right. you, you might get on some records. It might even be some scuffles, right? But you don't die in hip hop, right? Right. Now that's, bro. That's the like, norm, that's yeah, like, every, I'm. You look at the phone, like, and it's who's like, next every day? Yeah, bro. That's scary. Yeah, right. Yeah. The rapper right. has the most dangerous job in America at yeah. the moment, right? Yeah. Well, let me That's correct dangerous. you on that. You yeah. said the rapper or the content that the rapper's putting out? Because there are rappers that don't talk about That's true. Not That's true. Street rapper content. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're a thousand. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. the most dangerous job. Should it be? I don't think so. Should it be? If you're talking about it, it's, you know, it's a... It's a Power in the tongue, it's, bro. It, 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 I'm saying. I, but you know what, D? Man, I, I just feel like, uh, man, these young dudes got so much talent, bro. And I, I you know, I wish there was a lot of them that that had these iconic developers. You yeah, know what right. I mean? You yeah. need these developers, man. Like right. you need you it's everything in life that was great had a developer, bro. Yeah. But everything's fast food now. So that's the I think yeah, that's the ultimate food. problem. People everything is microwave, bro. It's no slow cooking. Remember any artist from Snoop, I mean it, every one of them came through you know, like this in the in the launch, it wasn't just an immediate launch. It was like, all right, oh, you gonna be on this record? Are you gonna be in the lift some crates? Like, you know what I mean? And now everybody, I mean, a lot of them are doing it themselves in their basement or whatever. Facts. And then it and then it happens. But it's only microwave for us. The rest of the world is still following the same regimen. Like you, you when you look at pop or you look at a uh, uh, rock and roll, oh, right? Yeah, they right. are following the same regimens yeah. that the other greats had, mm-hmm. right? They yeah. are following this regimen. For us, it's microwave because we only see ourselves in what we doing at the moment. Yeah. If I'm a drill rapper, then in the moment, that's all I am. I'm mm. pulling out. I'm whipping out. I'm 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 doing this when. Nigga, no, you're not. You're yeah. really a business, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are a drill rapper, but you are a business. You're right. a business yeah. that can change your 
life. Yeah. And if you view it as I can change my life, and I view it as I can change my homie's life, yes, we're going to get in some situations, but the, the, the point would be to make it out and survive right. and not yeah. die. I feel like now... We feel like dying, come with it. Yeah. I'm rapping, they kill me tomorrow, play my records at my funeral, mm, air it out, go get them. Yeah. Why do that when you can have generational wealth? Yeah. It's really a mindset that we're... Microwave is for black people, I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Only black people got microwaves. Right. Yeah. We're the only genre of music that this is, exists to. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. us. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Nobody else. Yeah. But these men and women are businessmen right. and women. Yeah. I only, it, it bothers me that they don't see it because I see it now from the, the seat that I'm sitting in. I see it. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. All of these people are following you, mm-hmm. and you ain't got no merch. Right? Wait, 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 wait! You got all this money, and you ain't got no home portfolio. Right? right. Wait, 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 wait! You got all this money, and it's under the couch, nigga. Mm-hmm. You telling me you ain't got it in a bank? Right. 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 You can gain interest off of some of this money. Mm-hmm. Who you talking to? Yeah. Who is guiding you, bro? Right. Yeah. Who is crazy. telling you that this is okay? Because we have the skill set to be more than what people think we are. And that's what I think we get caught up in. Right. So on that note, right, you mentioned a few things, right? You mentioned Pac and Big. You mentioned all this, uh, you know, all these other things, right? Uh, you know who comes to my mind and it hurt my heart when he passed? Ooh. Nipsey. Wow, man. And I felt like he embodies embodied yeah. exactly yeah. what you're talking. And that's exactly how I looked at him. Facts. Uh as the as the prototype for future generations Facts. to show them the way. Facts. Listen, Nip uh Nip was a uh man, a once in a lifetime uh man. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, uh when you when you talk about a crip reading books, they don't mm-hmm. even go together. Right. right. And a lot of Crips do read books in prison. Right. But you read them in prison because right. you ain't got nothing else to do. You mm-hmm. to when you're reading them at home after a shootout, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, something different. Something right. Different, yeah, right. wait a minute. You you reading a book at home after you just caught a fade and got jumped by the enemies, right. something different. Yeah. The uh yeah, that that hurt because to to see where he was headed was out of this world, mm-hmm. right? And but man, the same thing with Dolph. Right. Yeah. Same thing with absolutely. Nip. What what I why artist development right and management and who you surround yourself is so important right mm. because as you being an artist and you being a DJ there's different modes you're in when you're at a peak of that spe- specific task that you are mm. so when you're in DJ mode and you're in height of your DJ mode you're in a zone that no one else can see you in a special place right. meaning that when you leave the the studio and you're driving in a car and you listening to this mix you're zoned in to this mix and when you get to talking about hey man I just left the studio and I zoned into this mix and you're in this space that has took you out of this street element mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now when you play both sides though Right. right. When you play both sides, every rapper should know this. If you are a street rapper and a street nigga, you better know when to turn on and off. Because mm-hmm. when you outside and you think you cool because you in rap mode, right. the niggas you had beef with still in street, still mode. street mode. Right. So you can't be so locked in on your last album that all you doing is driving around the city, listening to this amazing mix and these amazing records, just feeling untouchable because uh-huh. that's what you feel when you're in these zones, right? Yeah. Ask any rapper that's in a zone. This man is in a zone. He hears a beat. He's rapping to it. We driving to it. We playing it back. We, You know what I mean? Uh-huh. We calling the homies. Bro, I done killed them. You know, that's the zone you in. Right. Ask any street nigga that's at war what kind of zone he's in. Yeah, That guy stay on his lap. Right. Yeah. Every red light, he like this. Yeah. He watch what he say somebody to. Pulling yeah. up. No, nah, I ain't pulling up in this car. I ain't got no tent. I'm right. out of here. Right. That's a different zone. Mm. You cannot be in both zones at the same time mm. in the, in a certain environment. Right. When you in that environment, you got to be that 24-7. Mm. Because niggas is dying in L.A. every day in these environments. Yeah. Right. We don't give a fuck if you rap. Right. We don't give a fuck if you a manager. Yeah. We don't give a fuck if you a businessman or you, or you dunk a ball or you catch one. Right. You in this environment, this is the tone we have. Right. You better have that same tone. Mm. As an artist, you got to get out of that environment. Mm. You can come back to that environment. You can thrive in that environment. You can build in that environment. Right. But you can't stay there. Mm. You can't stay in that environment. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's going to hurt somebody's feelings. I, and I know it will when they hear it. Mm-hmm. But that environment, you will get more haters from where you live at than somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You stay in that environment, man. Yeah. Look, man, listen. They all, I, they, it's happening. It's, it's happening, every, happening all over the world. All over the world. Listen, yeah. once you get to a point to where you are locked in and this is now not a hobby, it is your career. Yeah. You can't hang out in that environment. Hanging out at the liquor store ain't a good idea no more. Yeah. Right. Yo, the rapper, a.k.a. from South Africa, he did an interview with me ten, not quite 10 years ago, but he told me his favorite place to perform. And guess where he was murdered? In the same place in South Africa where he, he, where he, was, where he loved. And then Nipsey and then Dolph. And so many people, uh, you know, even, even Doe who was signed to T.I., he died right in his hood in Montgomery. Like, you know. It's, it's uh. It's sad, bro. You yeah. know what? And and I, you know, I'm I, I don't I don't judge nobody because I've made dumb decisions too, mm-hmm. and I get why these dumb decisions are made. I understand it, but I mm-hmm. do understand now that, you know, if it's poison in the water and you keep drinking, the nigga's gonna kill you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you right. gotta understand that sometimes being there all the time isn't a good thing. That doesn't mean you don't have to not go there. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you, you can give back. You can, right. you can come celebrate. You can stay for a time. Mm-hmm. You can stay for a while. Mm-hmm. You can have a good time and you can give hope and inspiration to right. people there. Yeah. But to yeah. stay there, right? that's two different mindsets. You got to be locked in your mindset. If I'm walking out of the trenches every day and I keep talking about management, I'm, that's not going to end well for yeah. me. Right. <laughs> that's, that's not a good ending. Right. Managers right. aren't there every day. That's right. not where the managers be. That's yeah. not where it's that at. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one walking out the gate without a gun and I'm looking plumb dumb around this motherfucker. Right? Yeah. This is where your gun is your ID card. Right. If you ain't got one, what you there for? Right. right. Yeah. I will stop by and give inspiration all day, though. Yeah. I'll come talk. I'll come spend money. I'll come show love and I'll come build. And I will show you that this is not where you have to stop. You can start here, but you ain't got to stop here. Yeah. But all that one to hang in it, man, listen, man, I don't, you know. Yeah. But you know how we are. Black people are prideful. And I get it. Yeah. I got some too. And you can't tell me not to go, man. What? I'm eight million in, man. Fuck them niggas. Yeah. And park my shit out front. Right. Like, that's what we do. They throw the set up. That's what right. we do. But then, you know, ain't nobody, you know, the homies gonna miss you and we're gonna talk about you forever, but your daughter gonna cry real hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yo, where's the music for that? Where's oh, that song? Then your yeah. listen, your mama, them mama's weak different. Where's them mama's song? weak forever. Yeah, they right. do. The yeah, homies do. pour out liquor. Yeah. The homies cry when you pop into their mind. Rightfully so, because life does go on. But for a mother, mm-hmm. for a, a, a daughter or a son or right. a father, yeah. them, nigga, them cries is forever. Yeah. Yeah. Them cries is deep. Them different. But you don't think that when you... Bro, because yeah. you only see yourself who you are in that moment. You yeah. have to understand I am more than just right. a rapper. Right. Oh. I right. am more than just a... Yeah. So I got I to, gotta, you know, well... You know, I mean, shoot, I ain't got nothing else. I'm to good, do. but I, yeah, I'm but good. I wanna, I wanna before you know your top five. You know, I wanna hear yeah, your top five, dead or alive, MC? MCs. Yeah, yeah. That's dangerous. Yeah, cause I, you know, you got a different mind state, so you that's know, dangerous. Now, I gotta be specific though, right? When yeah. you mean MC, am I talking about putting bars together, oh, bars. That's or am what I we... talking about song making? Cause that's the that's the, well, that's not it, the same it, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it could be. It could. Yeah, we we'll well, lean in. We we'll lean into the. <laughs> we'll lean into the, we'll we'll lean into the lyrics. We'll lean into the lyrics. Yeah, we're leaning into lyrics and MCs. and things of that nature. But I mean, but if you if you want to say Drake or something like that, I ain't gonna be mad at you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not gonna say that's that. That's wonderful. I, but I, no, listen, I, I I fuck with Drake. Drake is hard. Yeah. Drake is hard. Drake is hard. I'm just when, saying. When Drake feel like rapping, <laughs> yeah. When he feel like when rapping. Drake feels like rapping, Drake will spar with. Right, he get down. He get down. Yeah. But if he didn't write his own shit, he can't be considered a great. The greatest MC. No, we're not gonna have this conversation. No, we love listen. this already. He's right. If he you can't. don't write okay, your own shit, you can't shit. be. Okay, I just didn't want to take be? ten minutes on that. Write it. I know. I agree. I, I just don't want to say we okay. did this with the Sugar Hill yeah. Gang. I'm like, just no, we got two podcasts to go. If I write your rap, change, right? We got to. If I write your rap, bring me on stage with you two and you in that war. I need to talk to the person that wrote it. Tell Rock, come on up because that was all year. Yeah, I need to talk to Rock. Rock wrote that. You don't write this. I'm with that. Top five MCs, right? And I'm just going off lyrics. Off lyrics. I'm 
I'm ex- I'm a Nas fan off lyrics. Okay, okay. QB. No I'm an Eminem fan off lyrics. Okay, Hi. okay, okay. I'm an Eminem fan off lyrics. You can't go wrong with um, those. I'm a whole fan off lyrics. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm an Andre 3000 Ooh. fan off lyrics. Oh my god! Agreed. Agreed. Andre is phenomenal. Yeah. In this fifth spot, I, I I'm being I'm going with Tupac. And listen, let me tell you I, I why. Somebody, let that. me tell you why though. And that, that wasn't top five in order. Right. But the the reason Pac's lyrics mean something to us is because the lyrics had meaning behind them. It just wasn't to put a bar behind right. a bar. A lot of rappers put a bar behind a bar because mm-hmm. it rap with a bar. It with yeah. a bar. Right. No, 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 no. Pac, like I, you know, Mother's Day, dear mama still hit me like a like a bat you know, out of right. the, out of the park. Yeah, the lyrics is different. Right, like I, cadence too. Right. Yeah, oh, a lot like of the charisma, the, yeah, the, charisma. The, the 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 voice tone to master right. his tone, mm-hmm. his highs and low. Like Pac, you know, was I know a lot of people won't say he was a lyricist, right. and I'm not saying bar for bar, right. but I'm saying the lyrics that he spoke. Uh-huh. No, it's powerful. It has substance. He make you cry. He make you want to go shoot somebody. He make you want to think. He make you want to be a politician. Facts. He make you want to be an actor. Facts. A lot of think about it. Pac was 24 years old. Yeah. Look what he accomplished. Facts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give me a 24, 24 right Listen, now. Because Pac figured out young right. he was more than. He was Ooh. exactly. Listen, exactly. He, was he figured it out young. I am more. Then. And the right. feds found out and too. Feds, this is, listen, <laughs> I'm also sorry. did Nip though. No, Nip figured oh, yeah. out young. Oh, hey. I am more. I am more than. Mm-hmm. Usually we figure it out later in life right. when you bump, when you chasing 40, 35 looking. You know, you like. Wait a minute, I got to figure out some other. But if we can get these young men and women to figure out now that right. I am more than. And I think some are when you start looking at the Rihanna's who is just doing oh, phenomenal. She's yeah, she's doing phenomenal yeah. work. Mm-hmm. When you Dave is now acting and rapping, that right. is mm-hmm. that is more than it out. you know. That's yeah. that's figuring it out. Yeah. Um, if they all get engaged and buy into the, the I am more than and want to hear more business ideas instead of loading guns. I am more than management. That's your name. I need my twenty percent, a thousand percent. <laughs> Listen for real though. But, but I, I got that from the coaches, bro. Right. The coach K's. I, I got. Yeah. I got the good. I. I come off that old school food. I got good greens, mac and cheese in me. I got right. to see it. Like, right. you know, I, I, bro, I sat in the studio with Nocturnal. I probably don't know if you guys remember. Of course. Nocturnal. Of course. Of course. Come on, man. Don't do us like that. Only OGs remember that. Only OGs remember that, though. Okay. And man, he said that. I got a trivia quick, but go ahead. Yeah. I got, I got so, a super So, Nocturnal now. was <laughs> the first man to show me how to make a real record. Right. Okay. Like, I'm talking about a real record. Right. right. The cadence, the bars, right. the, just a real, to have that iconic, huge sound. Not Nocturnal sat next to Dre for a long yeah, time. Yes, he did. Right? So to be in right. the studio with Nocturnal, now that I look back at it, was fool. Right. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, I've got, man, Nocturnal was him yeah. then. Right. Right. He had his own vices that he had to fight. Right. To just, but, but man, musically, Noc right. was different. Uh-huh. It must be a Cali thing, because think about it. Nocturnal, Nipsey, and Snoop look alike. Fact. Hey, look at that. Hey. <laughs> that's true. Hey, <laughs> facts. That's a fact. facts. That's facts. That's Shout a out to Uncle Snoop. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Uncle Snoop. Yeah. That's my dog. Shout out to Cali, man. I love Cali. No, Cali I mean, I'll be always nervous. Every now and then I get nervous. But I don't really be nervous, but people make me nervous. Because right. they be... No, you should be nervous. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you no, no, should you're be. Right. No, you should. You should. It's you misleading. you should be nervous because in California we are, we brainwashed over there. Right. Mm. As a as a as right. a as a side of the culture. Talk about of the, that. You Talk know, about that. We we yeah we um man it's 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 personal for me right it's personal for me because I know what we think and why right. we think it uh-huh. but we are definitely brainwashed to the point where there's nothing we won't do. When and where we have a history of that, yeah. uh-huh. like that is our that is our history, right. yeah. and it's a lot of people that's proud of it. Don't like don't think that that we don't check one off the board, no mm. matter where and what it came from, right. you know. And that's 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 a that's a brain well, that's a problem. Right. You know what I mean? That's a problem. It's a, it's a problem to you know, man. I, and I don't want to get too deep into just the gang culture and, and, and what and what no, you know what we it. do, but. But that that's we are brainwashing. People should be afraid until we figure out how to get it right. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I'm working on this documentary. I don't want to talk much about it, but it but it it, it expresses that of, of how our how we're raised over there. I just did an interview with um, God, Killer Twan. This is a guy that's on there. Went to the Bounty Hunter projects, right? Uh, with the Bloods over there, and mm-hmm. you know, he gave me some bars on how they was raised. Uh, my boy from Trap Kitchen, 
out of the Park Village projects. I went over there and got some interviews and man, just to see these, you know, four year olds and five year olds running around and you can, I can tell you where they're going to end up already. Right. I can look, I can look and say, if you don't get no guidance in the next six months uh-huh. right. and you seven years old, I'm looking at you. Right. Like I'm look I'm looking in your eye at seven and I can say you've seen too much for a seven year wow. old. Bro, that is deep. Like wow. you that is bro, that's a problem. Right. Wow. That's a problem. It, it's yeah. funny you brought that up because um um are you familiar with Gangster from Santana Block? From, OG Gangster. OG Gangster. Yeah, I have actually I, I don't yeah. know him, but yeah. I've watched the I think he passed away. No, he's still you know he's, he's still, still alive. He's still alive. I, I watched right. some of his uh, uh documentaries right. on there. It's on, turtle. On it's, it's, it's turtle. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's turtle that passed away. So I think away. I watched Turtle. I watched Turtle. Yeah, turtle is Turtle who passed away. But anyway, he he he, he was he broke it down. He said Crippen started in nineteen sixty nine. Yeah. Which it did. Yeah. They've been Crippen since the six since sixty nine. And yes, he sir. said so we ha- he, he's saying we have fifty four years of history to see that it was a bunch of bullshit. And uh, the only way it's going to change is if we come together and figure it out. And he was saying, like, the OGs that, that, that are promoting this gang culture and even the young people, they can see. You could go back to 69 and see, you killed me, I kill you, you kill them, we kill them. Nobody's winning. He, he has a question. Who won? In Listen, 55 years, nobody's who, won. Who won was the United States. Right. They won because the, the, the reason that it won't stop, and I'm being honest with you, it, it won't stop. Right. It's because it, it is the trauma. Right. Mm-hmm. It is the trauma. Everybody that grows up in these housing projects and these lower bottoms, bro, they should qualify for PTSD. Mm-hmm. You should qualify for some kind of uh, 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 mentorship right. or, mm-hmm. or, or someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. Bro, you I'm telling you, I'm t- I'm looking at these eight year old boys, mm-hmm. bro. They are groomed already. Mm-hmm. I'm asking, bro, they eight years old. They seen their bodies already. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. Do you know what that does to the psyche of an eight-year-old kid? Right. Imagine what it does to a grown man. Right. So then I'm eight. Mm. I grow up. Now I'm 14. Y'all pull up. Y'all kill my homie. I'm mm. 14. Right. The first death for most of us is hard. You remember that forever. Yeah. You know, it usually happened when you're young. You took him at 14. I will forever hate you. Right. Yeah. Rocket can't come over here and tell me not to dislike you. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Big dog can't come tell me. Man, listen, I forever hate them. That pain, the trauma that I have, the only way I'm going to release this trauma is if I talk about it to somebody that understands and they got to keep letting me talk about it. Over and over. And and that's what is frowned upon on the West Coast. Man, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about the trauma. Bro, I got trauma. I got real trauma, but... I've been blessed enough to be able to talk to people. I've been blessed enough to have mentors, people mm-hmm. that understand. I've been blessed. Bro, when I tell you it's needed, and it's not just needed in L.A. Y'all need it right here in New York, no, too. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Y'all, y'all going up. It's popping over yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Right. But it comes from the trauma, right? Yeah. It comes from the trauma and, and the lack of mental health that they just put us in these feet. We just survived so long and we make it look good, but y'all got trauma, too. No, you're yeah. right. Y'all done seen some... Listen, no, right. listen, if I broke down and started asking you about them nights at 13, 14... Right. Something going to pop up right. and your whole eyes going to change. Right. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. We just learn how to mask it well. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But if we don't talk about it, that's the mental health that, that we need to capture. Because if you hit the wrong nigga's car in L.A. while he going through trauma and you visiting on a vacation, right. that will be your last day. Yeah. Right. Bump his car the wrong way while he having one of them mental breakdowns. Mm-hmm. Right. Hit my car and jump out and say, hey, Brian, I didn't mean to hit you. Yeah, yeah, all right, take all the six yeah. of these. And right. I do life yeah. in the prison. I'm, I'm, I'll be a four-yard bandit. I can do it. Right. Yeah, I had right, that situation crazy. in Newark one time. I bumped this dude's car and he got and I said, My bad and he and and I saw his eyes. Yeah. I said, Ooh. Yeah. How do I make this right? Yeah. I made it right. He wasn't there though. Yeah, yeah. The trauma was gonna overcome whatever that little bump that yeah, that triple right. A could have fixed. That's a fact. That's, that state farm could have yeah, fixed with no fact. problem. Yo. Right? But yeah, yeah that's that's another yeah. thing that, that's that's heavy on my heart to do is, is okay. I I wanna show the trauma side of the effects that we have is as children and then classifying to a, a young man right. and then classifying to a grown man. Mm-hmm. Why is it always us that has to figure it out at 40? Yeah. Why we got to figure it out at 45? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Everybody else is planned at 22, 23. Mm-hmm. But we got Trump. Women too. Right. That's a fact. Man, these women got trauma. Yeah. They got mama trauma. Let's yeah, keep it no, real. Right. They got mm-hmm. daddy trauma. That's right. a fact. Nobody mm-hmm. talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And the way we express it is drill music. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now. Facts. Now. So, which yeah. is 
more trauma. With no, <laughs> it's more right. trauma. Yo, man, rock it, rock it, rock it, man. I appreciate yo, y'all. we could definitely keep. Yeah, yo, yo, you gotta y'all. come back. You oh, gotta yeah, come back. Definitely. You gotta, you gotta come back here. One world. Yo, man, I appreciate you, bro. It's been a pleasure knowing you, like. As a person for all these years, yeah, man. Like yeah. I just want to say that you always been solid, yeah, bro. No. You know what I'm saying? That mean a lot to yeah, you. for real, you. for real. I right. promise you, that yeah. means everything to me, man. Yeah. Just, but before we go, yeah. I got one last question. All right, what is your question? What is it? What is your question? What is it? I got one last question. Give it, let's, let's do it. And here it goes. Uh oh. Did you get your name Rocket from Rocket from the Colors? No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah, <sure>. Rocket <laughs> is my real name. Okay, Rocket right. is your real name. My real name is Willie Rocket. Okay. Right. I got will, will he rock it? Get yeah, it? You know what? An old bar. lady asked me that one time, right? <laughs> I'm going to a real bar. My name is Willie Rock, and she really Willie pulled Rocky up on me and was like, will me? he rock? I said, come on. That's man. a bar. That's sexual harassment in the professional, <laughs> right. professional world. You can't that's do that. Right but yeah, yeah, Willie Rock is my real name. Okay. You know, Rocket just stuck. Okay. Right. That's like Chuck. Fact. So you yeah, never sampled nothing from Colors when he was like Rocket. Yes. Oh, most definitely. My that. first okay. mixtape had all that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Rocket smoke. don't I joke. I love it. Rocket, Rocket don't smoke. smoke. Rocket buzzing. Yeah. It. Thousand percent. <laughs> I sampled all that. I sampled all. I love it. I sampled all of that. Dope. True dope. LA shit right there. Yeah. Appreciate you, right. bro. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Nah, for real. Don't forget my twenty percent. I got y'all. Why he there? We just wrap. Right. Just do the drop real quick.